Hey friends, here I am live and there's lots of you watching already, or a few of you anyway. Hey to Phil Mosley Music, great to see you first man here. Uh, Terry Tickler's here, uh, Mr. Tiller, uh, 111, hi, good to see you. Roger uh, Fe Feelers, Gary Tollander, um, Umo 3 PL SDN, Pete, he's here, my buddy Pete from New Zealand. Great to see you all, guys. And Quentin's in. Quentin, just for you, my friend, I have to say, water. And welcome to this live unboxing, live stream. Um, we have got a couple of boxes from John Hormy Skews that have come this week, and you have chosen this one by quite a long way. Oh, Bam Mozzie's in. Hey, good to see you, Bam. Um, we've got loads of you in. Goodness me, I, I can't see how many there are in because I'm just looking at the comments. So if you can let me know how many are in, that would be really great. But really good to see so many of you here. And I'm quite happy to answer a few of your questions. Uh, Irish Paul, I didn't skip you. I didn't see you till then. Uh, Robert Baker's in. Hey, my man, Robert. It's really great to see you in, brother. Really nice to see you here. So we've got 45 here. Phil Mosey says JHS Rock. And uh, so does Robert Baker. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, so we're going to open this box in a little bit. I'm just going to let a few more come in. I was going to wait until we got 50, but it looks like we're almost there now. So I was asked on a previous video, a recent video, if I could get what I believe this guitar to be, because I've moved it over slightly, and I'm pretty sure I know which one this is. So, yes, you finally made a live one, Robert. Great to see you. And everyone's saying hello to Robert. I'm not surprised. It's really cool to see you, brother. And uh, I was just watching your How to Avoid Cowboy Chords. Loving that video. Uh, and all I can say is, yeehaw. <laughs> Is the sound, is the audio okay or is this too loud? I've just got it coming through the focus, right? So it's it's the first time I've really used this but the 50. Wow. Okay, so yeah, I, I've got a couple of guitars coming from John Hornby Skews. It sounds good. That's good. Thank you, Bam Mozzie. Great to see you again, brother, as well. Um, we've got, hey, Mike, how's you, buddy? I'm very good, thank you, 123 Kelly Gibson. Uh, Thanks, Robert. Cool, glad it sounds good. We've got Andy Smith in. We've got Gary Tollander in. Uh, we've got Achim DG. Uh, we've got Brad Miller. Yay, Brad, you made it in. That's really good to see you, brother. So, uh, have you got any questions? Has anybody got... Jason Wade's in. Hey, Jason, good to see you, brother. And we've got Ben Coombs. But at last, I've got a mod in. That's cool. Uh, anything from vintage. I'm a huge fan of vintage. Do you know, actually, JHS are the, um, the dealer and distributor for GH JHS uh, for vintage in the UK. Um, I'm just seeing that somebody said at least it won't be a Chinese fake. No, no, no. We don't do those anymore. Not on this channel. Um, so, yeah, John Hornby Skews are the dealer for vintage. So I can review pretty much any vintage guitar. I want to say as well, before we even get started on this one, that it is as per normal with my John Hornby Skews arrangement. I'm not being paid to review this and I don't get to keep the guitar. So really, we can open this and, and you'll get my absolute honest opinion on it. But really, as always, I want you guys to tell me what you think of this. Can't really see it there. I've got this really nice stream deck switching system. So I've got three camera angles that we can use today. There's the wide shot for when we're opening it. A little bit closer in for when I'm talking to you. And we've even got a real close up so that you can see, see the guitar. So that's what I'm playing with. If I turn around over there a lot, I'm missing so many comments. Um, are there any questions? Have I missed any questions? Doesn't look like it, other than Peter Brown saying, hey, how are you doing tonight, mate? Good to see you, Peter. Really, really good to see you. Um, I, I don't know what, it's a 59 Les Paul. Yeah, I do wish. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not a 59 Les Paul, but it is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tease you now. It is the heavier of the two boxes. So um, Jason Wade says, where'd you get the shirt? Well, actually, whoa, I got this at TGU from the lovely people at Boss. 
so yeah, it's the super overdrive pedal. And uh, it's super overdriven, particularly in the low end here. As you can see, not much in the top range and the mid range, but definitely got a bit extra in the, in the bottom end. Okay, um, let's open it, shall we? I know that you're all dying to see what it is. Uh, action cam, oh man. I run out of USB ports. I've got the, um, the 4K action cam, which would have been great to be able to go in real tight and real close with, but uh, I'm stuck with the one GH5. And the good thing about the GH5 is it's on uh, 4K, so hopefully you'll get in some really good video here. Uh, it's 3 p.m. CST in Chicago on a beauty, beautiful Sunday afternoon. Glad it's nice out there for you, my friends. 75 watching. Yes, welcome to everybody. Lefty Mike's in. Who else have we got? I've said Jason Wade. Wade Lazenby Jr. He's got, just got the new 2018 Les Paul Standard. Lefty in Mojave Burst. Wow. Leaving chips and behind, I never was really with them, my friend. I just uh, unbox them and uh, do you want to know what number? You want to know what number it is? <laughs> Robert said, only three cameras. Psst, I'm out of here. Uh, <laughs> oh, thank you, Phil. Yeah, do, do give me some thumbs up if you like, if you like the number 52. It was a winner by miles, wasn't it? Everybody wanted to see number 52. So that's what we're gonna open. And um, I'll try and keep an eye on the, the comments. <laughs> Scott, Scott Cunningham says helmet cam. Yeah, I think possibly not. So I've been doing a little bit of a look up on this guitar because as I moved it over, I realized being slightly heavy, it's gonna be very embarrassing if the heavier guitar is not the one I'm expecting because I've done all of the, the, uh, all of the research here on, uh, on the heavier one. TK, TTK's in, Tone King. Great to see you, brother. Really, really good to see you. So this one, I was just saying to the, to the guys that this comes from John Hobby Skews. I'm not paid for the review and I'm not getting to keep any of the guitars that they send me. By my request, oh, I love these things. Um, by my own request, because it's really, really easy. And, and Tone King, you'll appreciate this. And I think also to a degree, Robert, you'll appreciate this as well. We so often get accused of being um, in the company's pockets or uh, shills is the, definitely the wrong word. When people say shills, um, a shill is a, a helper or a stooge to a con man or a confidence trickster. Um, and I don't think any of the companies that send us these, these guitars to review are that at all. But I do like to be very, very impartial. And I feel that if I don't get paid for this in any way, and I don't get any gain from it, then I can't be, I can't be biased. So, I tend not to say anything much about what I think about them and let you do the review in the comments section. This is a long box. Uh, and I just concentrate on taking them out of the boxes, which is what I'm good at, and just giving you a demo of them, which is what I'm not so good at. I could do with you, Robert, really. Okay. <laughs> it is the guitar that I thought it was. And somebody asked me on the previous video if I could get hold of one of these. That's going to give it away straight away. If you haven't already guessed, let's see if any of you have guessed. Oh, that's very kind, Bam. Thank you. It's my honesty that keeps you as a subscriber. Thank you. Jamal's in. Jamal, great to see you, brother. Yay, it's not the acoustic. You're right. You're right. It's not the acoustic. And I can tell you it has... 12 strings. It has, oh, wow. It has a bag of Allen wrenches. And I love the color already and I haven't even got it out of the bag. Before you ask, we're not going to tune it and demo it tonight. I will do that on Fretted Friday this week, but I thought you'd like the unboxing live and to ask a few questions. It is, the Dan Electro DC 59X 
12 in cream. And look at that, guys. Isn't she a beaut? And I'm allowed to say that without being... There you go. Tone King says he's got the six string version. I've got a great guitar there. And such an inspiring guitar to play, Robert says. And Guitar Dit is in. Hey, brother, good to see you. And wow. That's pretty much in tune. Not quite, not quite. So there it is. Let's have a little bit of a closer look, shall we? There we go. Let me move over so that you can get a bit of a closer look at this 12 string Dano. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. So in keeping with this is actually a new release of Dan Electro Guitars. They have just released, they had their 60th anniversary, but actually it's strange with Dan Electro because the original Dano started by Nathan Daniel uh, was from 1947 when they originally started up to 1969. So this 60th anniversary is actually celebrating the demise of the original Dan Electro because it wasn't until 94 I think that Everts Corporation took over and started making these again so yeah they have got a, a 60th anniversary can I get that any closer to the camera without it spoiling anything let's have a look so there we go there's the headstock and it has got an aluminium nut, which hopefully this will eventually focus in on. No, it's more interested in my shirt, isn't it? Okay. Oh, there we go. That's better. So it's got an aluminium nut and it has the dual lipstick bridge pickup. Oh, there we are. And it has got what looks like a massive equal sized sort of humbucker in the neck but that's not that's actually a single coil that gives it beautiful warm jazz tones uh, the the bridge pickup has got a coil tap and i'm wondering how that works because there certainly doesn't seem to be anything on the selections maybe it's a push push i'm not sure but i was i was reading the specs and this should have yeah it's a humbucker size p90 that's right Tone King, P90 and, and double lipsticks. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I bet yours does have an aluminium nut. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And I think you'll agree the cream color is absolutely beautiful. So as you can see here, hopefully, it's the 59X12. And I really like the cream color. It comes in a choice of black, this cream, or a dark red. Oh, hello, I think I might have just sat on my radio mic. Sorry. Um, so yeah, black, cream, and dark red. Yeah, I, I really like this guitar. I think it's, it's, a, good, it's a good weight as well. I, I, and I wasn't expecting it to be quite so heavy because usually, I think this is a solid body guitar by the, oh no, it's not because they're normally masonite and poplar bodies. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Tone King says, it looks great on me. Thank you, my friend. Uh, what price range are we talking here? Okay, in the UK, this one is a recommended retail price. And this was just literally hot off the presses when they brought out these anniversary ones at 599 GBP. So I think that's about 640, 650 US dollars. I didn't do the maths. In fact, I've got a dollar sign up there next to the uh, pound sign. Somebody do the maths for me quickly. Uh, the bodies used to be aluminium. Uh, yes, no, I think that the, um, the thing with uh, Dan Electro is they start, started off in the 40s making amps and I think they made them for Sears uh, under Silvertone and also they made amps under the airline brand and then they went into building guitars 
later on in the 40s and they started building them with the masonite which is like a compressed board uh, like a, almost like a formica uh, that, that has a, a plastic coating which means that they can be built very light but very strong because of the popular inside constructions. Sound seems to be mono. Yes, I, I would imagine it will be mono. Unless, I hope it's not coming all out of one side because this is just plugged directly into the, the focus right. Is it all coming out of one side? Or is it in... It can be mono, I don't mind that at all. Uh, Peter Brown's played a six string orange coloured uh, one and it played very nice. Yeah, I, I looking at this the action looks about exactly how I like it. Let's see if I can give you a closer view of that. There we go. Uh, it's not really that close, is it? I'll have to keep getting up and coming towards the camera. But let's have a look at the action if we can get a close in. It's about one to two mil at the 12th fret there. That's the 12th fret. Okay. It's just coming out of the left speaker. Oh man, can we get your voice in a wet dry mix please? <laughs> uh, possibly not. I will be doing a full review on this guitar uh, on Fretted Friday, hopefully this week, if not next Fretted Friday. Let's come back out of there. That's better. Um, but I'm not gonna play it straight out of the box, not least of all because it's Sunday evening I've had a very, very long week because I've been working this week for a change. I'm glad you can hear me, that's cool. As long as you can hear me fine, that's the main thing. I've got a feeling that if I go in and play about with the Focusrite settings that I've actually got them as a stereo input from when I was using it on the last live stream uh, to take the inputs from the R16. So yeah, I will be doing a proper proper full review on this and I will play it for you and I'm really looking forward to playing it. In fact, it was down to Robert, Robert Baker, uh, and he did a video with uh, uh, his 12 string Dan Electric and I immediately got in touch with the guys over at Dan Electric and said, I need to try one of those out because the tones, and while I was over at uh, TGU with the Tone King and also or with Steve from Boston. We did a, a video and we played a, a 12 string Dan Electro. I, I believe it was this exact model only in the red, the dark red. And he hasn't released it yet. So I'm looking forward to seeing that, really looking forward to seeing that. You can hear me fine, that's brilliant. Uh, Brexit Central said, today Steppenwolf's lead singer has admitted he changed his name, he was born Toby Wilde. Interesting, there you go. So uh, apparently this is only $499 in the US. Thank you, Brian, really good to know. Yeah, um, so Steve and I did a video and I haven't seen it released yet on his channel, but I played a six string and Steve played the 12 string and I briefly had a go on this and I really, really love One, two, hey. No, I think it was me. Have you found, have you got the stream again? Intermission, go get your popcorn. Oh, this is good fun. Um, I have no idea why we lost the audio then. I'm really sorry, but hopefully I'll come back and it'll stitch it all together. Goodness only knows. Yeah, I was really close to uh, just taking a few questions and, and pretty much saying cheerio anyway, because the idea tonight was just to unbox it for you, just because I enjoyed that last um, live stream last Sunday so much. I just thought, yeah, I really, really should 
do more of these and everybody was saying that and I've had so many comments so I thought can't let you down gonna try it so really just wanted to unbox this one I might do the same with the acoustic did you not hear it oh William never mind oh, I love you too Quentin love you all this is an absolute pleasure to open this for you absolute joy to be on here I'm quite happy to do let's have a look how long have we had um, only 22 minutes that's not too bad quite happy to take a few questions if there's any questions in the comments uh, I've been looking at some of the videos that have come out of TGU as well really if you haven't seen it I put a link on my channel um, earlier hey scar my guitars in really good to see you as well um, I did a video with Guitar Max while we were over there and he's just released that a week or so ago and um, and we really really had a quite a quite a cool conversation over there so if you haven't seen that I've got a link in my um, description uh, not in the description in on my channel um, can't wait to hear the dual lipstick humbucking configuration any tap or split yes it's meant to be tapped but I can't feel any oh it was a bit stiff that's all yes there's a coil tap according to the website on the humbucker so that you can get that real Dano jangle so yeah the it does actually work just I think that my fingers were a bit slippy on that yeah, you saw it did you Peter good I'm glad you saw the video with Max we really enjoyed that and there's been quite a lot of uh, questions any more Les Paul style guitars coming in for review yes I'm seriously thinking about doing a few more of the vintage branded Les Paul guitars because they've got so many different varieties and different different flavors of them so yes I'm hoping to do more of that um, wow everybody's in tonight it's my brother Mike Bradley great to see you mate really good to see you um, yeah so we've got we've got Robert Baker we've got the Tone King we've got Mike Bradley we've got Scar my guitar we've got my buddy Ben Coombs Phil Mosley uh, music. We've got Brad Miller. We've got Todd Flowers. We've got Van Moddy. We've got Mozzie. We've got Peter Brown. We've got loads of people in, um, and it's so good to see you all while I'm unboxing this. And actually, I'll tell you what: if you hurry down, Mike, maybe you could do the demo for me. Come and play this guitar. Missed you. Really have. Um, everybody's saying hello to Mike Bradley now. Uh, Ian Checkley says, "Did you?" end the Milton project no 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 I never ended the Milton guitars project the Milton guitars idea was literally I say this all the time Dale's in hey Dale Palmer good to see you um, this is a um, a Dan Electro DC 59x 12 string uh, mic so yeah come and play it so going back to the Milton guitars thing now I didn't stop that I just the reason I started it in the first place was to put my money where my mouth was and offer a, a decent alternative to the fakes. And of course, then I discovered uh, Harley Benton and then latterly Glary and the like. And so I realized that the market that I was looking at, in it, i.e. at the cheap end of the range, wasn't something that I really needed to do anymore because there were alternatives that I could show you and give to you that I didn't need to build myself that there was already people doing it so no I didn't um, I didn't give up on the Milton guitar project but it's much more likely now that if it is ever resurrected it might be an English made brand and you know I've been working a lot with my buddy Lewis uh, Troer from LT Custom Guitars and there's a very strong possibility that between him and also uh, my buddy Ben Crow over at um, Crimson Guitars that we might end up training me how to build these things which would be quite quite good fun so uh, laid back cool cat Mike Bradley what's up dude <laughs> um, somebody asked earlier about if I'm a strat man and I do I like the strats I, I love playing strats and in fact one of the ones that I've been so hooked on recently and I honestly can't put it down is the Glary Strat that they sent me which is really peculiar because it's very very bottom end of the market very very cheap but I can't just can't put the the, the thing down 
Yeah, Mike MCE says to me, you mentioned Glary on the Maxvid. Worth me looking into. I think they are worth looking into. And at the price that they're at, that strap from Glary, I think, was something ridiculous, like 59 or 69 pounds, uh, which is well under 100 bucks. And um, yeah, I think that, that they do represent really good value. Obviously, they're not going to be in the same sort of market and same quality standard as as these things um, or any really established brand but yeah they really uh, I haven't put the thing down I've played it until the fingerboards got dirty although it is an unfinished fingerboard so uh, that might account for some of that um, uh, Casey Lee saw the Max video good video good uh, thank you for going over and checking that out I mean he's he's obliterated me now he's gone way past me in subscribers but we've been friends and talking to each other um, since before he was at the same level so um, we got on really really well when we went over to uh, Toman in in June and in fact we had a little well a couple of little hangouts before we went out there well actually the one one sort of uh, Skype call and we were we were emailing and Facebook messengering all the time uh, and we just had a real good time out there. And I think that what we both had to say on that video that he's just released actually was pretty close to being as direct about how I feel about the current state of play in the guitar market these days. I do think that we're living in a golden age of affordable, excellent value guitars. And... Um, I kind of go into a bit more detail and so does Max and I think we came to the same conclusion that we're actually a very lucky generation in terms of of what we can buy and the sort of stuff that we can get out there and um, yeah I, I, I do feel really fortunate but yeah I see a few comments about the Crimson Guitars thing uh, we met up at the UK guitar show in Olympia last year and Ben very kindly invited me to go down there and do a guitar building course and with one thing and another with me changing the way that I work these days I didn't get the opportunity to go down in May or in June obviously in June I wasn't expecting initially to be going off to Germany again um, so yeah I, I haven't had chance to take him up on his kind offer yet but since Lewis has, has been in touch with me and we've been doing a few reviews of the LT custom guitars and he's offered to to help me out as well so that I can start to build my skills up. I don't want to uh, miss out on the opportunity to go and see Ben at some stage but whether or not I can go down for a week and do the course the week-long course I certainly don't think I can do the uh, the 90 day course uh, that he runs. He's got some incredible courses on down there. He's in Dorset in the UK and uh, he's he's a he's grown tremendously. I was with Ben Crow as a subscriber on YouTube since he was working on his own in his shed. Uh, so that kind of uh, kind of shows you how long I've been following him. But there you go. Um, there have been a few questions. I'm really sorry. They've all flown past so very quickly. Um, what have we got here? A three-month course would be great. Uh, thanks. Open mind, open market. Can't afford a Ferrari either. Like the uh, ethos there, my friend. Blues player said the binding used to come off the Danos on the body edge. Well, that won't be a problem for this one because, as you can probably see, this doesn't have a binding. I still can't get over quite how heavy this is. I will weigh it for the Fretted Friday video on it, but it's a lot heavier than I was expecting it to be. It's actually really pretty. I love that aluminium nut. That is really cool. Um, yeah, nice sort of red tortoiseshell type effect uh, pit guard. And actually one of the things I love most about Dan Electros, and I always have, even before I started playing them, is that uh, these really do look retro. I just think, yeah, it just looks, it's a good looking guitar. Mike Bradley, right on cue, says it's a good looking guitar. Reminds me of the Valentine Music Man. Spot on. Yeah, it's a real, they are, they're really eye-catching and their tone is equally unique. And I really, really like that, particularly the sort of the jangle that you get from them. 
Um, I forgot to say that this is a fully adjustable die cast bridge, so it's adjustable for intonation at the back and also up and down on what looks to be um, a hex, are they hex screws or are they? No, I think they, they may well be this small hex key. Yes, they are. My eyesight isn't what it was. So yeah, you can, you can adjust the bridge fully adjustable. Obviously it's a fixed bridge with a string through into these ferrules at the back. So that in, and also that there's a, there's a strengthened plate behind that. Um, what's the serial number? I can't read any of that. I'm getting really old, aren't I? Uh, yeah, they play really nice too, says Phil Mosley. Yep, absolutely, they really do. Um, you tried one at the JHS show. Cool, excellent. And somebody said to me, get yourself a drink. Yes, I am really, really baking out here. I don't know whereabouts you guys are in the world, but over here in the UK, I just dripped all over this beautiful guitar, hopefully not. Uh, over here in the UK, it's a really, really muggy Sunday evening. We've had uh, really good weather recently, and then all of a sudden we've had this kind of stormy few days, and the wind has been absolutely incredible. Uh, and for some reason, it's just really baking hot indoors. Where I've been working, I've been in indoors all week, and I've been sweltering, so yeah. I do think the relief at the high frets is not very good. I haven't checked the relief on this, Michael, but I'll do that for you now and just see what the, the, uh, the relief is like in this neck. There is no relief in this neck. This is, um, this needs a setup, which I, which I will do. Uh, this has obviously got a little bit of a back bow and in fact, no, we're all right. Let me just check the... There, that's cool. Okay, the nut is nicely cut. The nut is a, um, a nice height and there's, there's not much under that first fret when you fret at the third. Oh, I might have got a little bit of relief there. It's a rainy Monday over in New Zealand, is it, Pete? Oh. Yeah, I've got no relief at the, uh, at the first string at all. Uh, so this does need a bit of a setup in terms of the, the truss rod adjustment. What have we got? Uh, Mike's in Florida. Hey to Florida. Johnny Bean's in. Hey Johnny, how you doing? Amazing here in Santa Cruz. Really good to see you in my friend. Thank you for making it. Uh, your next call should be Lasco Fan Company. <laughs> yeah, Ooh, I tell you, it's really hot and muggy over here. Uh, it's muggy in Chicago, Peter, 82 degrees, rain on the way. Uh, and it isn't, always, isn't it always amazing in Santa Cruz at Johnny Bean? <laughs> New Zealand's got winter. Yeah, they're right in the middle of winter. I hope it's not too cold for you out there, Pete. And, um, we must do a video chat catch up really soon because uh, I, I haven't spoken to you for well, quite some time now and I hope you're still recovering as well as you were last time I spoke to you, buddy. Everyone's always been sending me loads and loads of comments wishing you well. Uh, Bam Mozzie says, it's been a horrible stormy day here as well. Thunder and heavy rain for most of the day. Yeah, in Saarland, Germany, it's not raining, but we'll get rain tomorrow. Yeah, it's probably the stuff we had yesterday. So. There it is, Dan Electro DC59X12 in cream, 60th anniversary reissue that they've just put out, and I will definitely do a review of this for a Fretted Friday very soon. Uh, long overdue, and I'm doing great, thanks. Great to know that, Pete, really great to know that. So, I'm going to take a couple of questions, and we will see this guitar later but I'll take a couple of questions from you, if there are any. If not, I'll let you all get off and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Oh, Jason, that is really, really sweet. And in fact, um, R2R3 sent me a little thing for the tip jar and the last live stream. So I was gonna play this for him, but you get the very first play of this, which is my little thank you for that. So, 
Just for you, Jason Wade, thank you so much. That's really kind, donating to the tip jar. Really, really appreciate that. Um, and it was just for the Studio Fan Fund, brother, and thanks for sharing the stream. No question, but thank you so much. That's really sweet. Uh, Pete said, when am I coming back to New Zealand? Uh, well, I think you're coming to the UK before I come back to New Zealand, probably, mate, uh, but let's talk about it. When you review it, would you play turn it, so turn, turn, turn on it? <laughs> I never play anything other than my own original stuff on this channel, which is why I've probably been so fortunate in not getting any of the copyright strikes that a lot of the other channels seem to get. I've accidentally played a few riffs a few times from other people, but I tend to make up my own thing. I may well write a song on this because it's really quite inspiring. Uh, Mike says, am I going to the guitar show next month? I tell you what, Mike, I would really love to. I will message you uh, on, on WhatsApp and see what days and times you're going. And if we can hook up together, love to do that. Really love to do that. So yeah, give me a shout and we'll work out when we can get up there and go together. I assume you are. <laughs> You'd probably say, no, I'm not going now, which would be really funny. So I take it, is that the, uh, the same as we, we met at last year, the UK guitar show? Is that what you're talking about there? Um, ben Coombe says, I play covers, but don't get strikes often, likely due to my poor playing. Yeah, I think I probably get away with the, the few accidental ones for the same reason, brother, but your playing's very good. Had a couple of false claims on my original backing tracks. Yeah, I saw that. It's crazy, isn't it? In fact, the track that you heard on the way in was a track I was writing for the work I was doing last week. Um, it was a backing track for something. Yes, uh, let's do it, man. Yeah, just going to Saturday. Okay, cool. Let's work it out. If I'm available, then yep, yeah, for sure. Do you know the dates? Um, that would be really good to know. There's, there, there may be a small problem early in September that I think you know about that I haven't said anything about yet. The other one's in October at Kempton Park, yes, usually at the end of October. And I believe that uh, 21st, that's cool, man. Yeah, in fact, I'll tell you what, <laughs> we'll just do our diaries on a live stream. Let me just check the 21st of, it's the 21st of, you haven't said the 21st of what? 21st of September, I'm pretty sure. That's free. I'm booking you in, Mike Bradley. We will go to the UK Guitar Show together on the 21st of September. Awesome, man. Uh, I figure by giving shout outs while playing, they figure it's different lyrics. Love it, like it. Um, yes, Mike, you do know exactly what I'm talking about. Ha ha ha. Uh, Duff Jacks had a copyright strike on the Morse ID of a ham repeater for. Not quite sure what that means, but um, sorry that you've got a copyright strike. Yeah, it's going to be great. It'd be really nice to meet up with you, Mike. Uh, we, we've, we've got to get together before then, definitely. And if you can come down soon, you can try this out and demo this for me. And then we can hear what it sounds like with a real player. Um, Phil Mosley won't be going to the UK Guitar Show in London, but he's going to the Leeds and Merseyside 1 too. Should be fun. Excellent. Yeah, because you're up in, um, in Chester, aren't you? I think, uh, Phil or somewhere around that area. Tomorrow I'll be raising our glasses to Lester Paulfus, who died. Ah, right, yes. Let's raise a glass to dear Les Paul, who died 10 years ago, my Lord. That is, that's crazy. It seems like five minutes ago, doesn't it? Yeah, Les Paul, really? 10 years tomorrow? My goodness, that's incredible. Yeah, good man, we'll meet before, definitely. Les Paul. Let's have a look on Wikipedia. I don't doubt you, I just, it's, it's amazing that it, that it was 12th of August, 2009, in White Palms Hospital, White Palms, New York, USA. My goodness, hasn't that gone fast? 10 years, Les Paul, wow. Okay, uh, what was the worst guitar you've ever played, mate, that's available now? Ah, oh, right, okay. 
I've played an awful lot of, of crappy guitars and um, I think I'm going to go with a K catalogue guitar that I played when I was very young um, which had action that was you could literally you could drive a bus under it a double decker bus at that um, ah oh, sorry I'm gonna have to interrupt that because R2 R3's in and he very kindly gave me a tip for the tip jar in the last live stream so this is for you brother I did promise you that I would do it so here it comes for you this is just for R2 R3 locking that Cheers, mate. I'm really glad you got in from work to see it as well. Really, really pleased that you got in from work to see it. Hopefully you got the sound with that as well, fingers crossed, hey? So yeah, always appreciate a, um, a little tip in the tip jar. And that was, uh, that was from Phil McKnight told me that because uh, He's quite a dude with that. Um, I've forgotten what I was, what question I was answering then, and it's gone now. Oh, the worst guitar. Yeah, I think definitely uh, it was a it was a catalogue guitar. I'm not absolutely sure if it was the fanfares in stereo. Well, at least the fanfares in stereo, if nothing else is. Uh, I'll try and work that out with this mic um, before the next stream. Uh, yeah, I definitely think that that. There are lots of cheap and nasty guitars that, that are no longer, we don't see them that much anymore. As I keep saying, I think that we are living, we're really fortunate to be living in a golden age of affordable guitars. And uh, we have so many now that are just super value, really, really super value. Oh, I thought that was the Dano going then rather than the uh, Uke. But we it, it, when i was a kid you know going back to the uh the days of black and white there was an awful lot of rubbish out there and now everything even the cheap stuff seems to be pretty good uh let's have a look mike bradley says surely that chips and les paul of yours i played is the worst ha 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 yeah i won't tell them what happened when we did the blindfold test mike <laughs> no, i'm only joking i'm messing with him i'm messing with him um, yeah, really, really pleased that you're in uh, R2, R3. Cool that you've made it. If you've got any questions for me, I owe you some, some answers. So give me a shout if you've got any questions. Um, and it's just lovely to see you in. I'm sorry if it's a bit distracting that I keep looking over there, but I've got a TV set up over there with uh, the comments big enough that my old eyes can read them. So that's why I have to keep on... Keep on looking over there, especially seeing Mike Bradley having a bit of a laugh. So I'm really sorry that the start of the live stream seemed to uh, cut out the audio at, some, at one point, but hopefully this will all stitch together and it'll all be one, one long stream. I know that when it went a little bit crazy on the last one, there was still the silent bit at the front end. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that they'll stitch these two together and it'll all be one video. And actually, that was terrible. For those of you that saw, uh, yeah, I'll borrow your glasses, uh, Ben. Um, those of you that saw the last live stream I did on the Rev G2 and G4 pedal, I was testing this stream today and I was trying to delete the test streams and I managed to delete the Rev stream and I was absolutely livid with myself. I could have kicked myself. So I'm going to have to do another standalone review video of the rev pedals because uh, that was good fun really really good fun and uh, yeah i managed to delete that stream like a fool so never mind uh, zim's guitar says playing my old pv5150 cool excellent uh, yeah i know ben bad news but i will do because the derek at rev was was a super awesome guy and I will redo the demo of those two pedals so it stays up on the channel. I had to redo a top five and five with the, oh, what was it? It was the Rickenbacker top five and five because uh, that one ended up getting uh, not a copyright strike but content strike. Yes, I usually always keep, well, I've got a backup of all my videos, Phil, but not the live streams, because who downloads a live stream to keep a backup? 
Not me. What a fool. I will do in future, I think. Yeah, I was very, very upset with myself, but never mind. Uh, yeah, still lost all the interactions, though. Yeah, I know. I was gutted. Absolutely gutted. Uh, Casey Lee says, just got a second-hand Chinese-made Squire Classic 550s telly for $150. Wow, fantastic. Changed the strings and adjusted the neck. Awesome guitar. Great stuff, Casey. That's that's really, really good news. Um, yeah, live streams would need to... you need to download them. Yeah, absolutely. Well... Yeah, you're probably right, as it was a review stream as well, rather than just like an unboxing, chill and hang and question time um, live stream, I probably should have downloaded that one and kept it. I really hope that Derek at Rev got to see that I'd done it, because it's been, you know, nearly a couple of months now since TGU. In fact, it's over a couple of months, isn't it? Because we're now into August, the double figures. Um, yeah. I've I've uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed doing this one, and I really enjoyed doing Sunday's stream last last week. I was a little bit conscious that I needed to make this one a bit later, um, but I think I, I didn't want to sort of tread on Pete Thorne's toes, or or I should should I say I didn't want to suffer the Pete Thorne effect because obviously everybody in this community loves Pete and probably wants to go over there and watch that. So I wanted to try and do it after his live stream, but let me know what you think. I'll do more if you're enjoying them. Uh, I've just got a question. Uh, can you tell me when Takamini first introduced into the market? I've got one for 435 years. Okay, well, obviously you, you must have had one of the first one if you've got a, a Takamini from 435 years ago. Um, <laughs> that's hilarious. Do you know where Tone Rider pickups are made? No, I don't, actually. I've got it, but I'm sure somebody in the comments will hear. Ben, you, I know you slept through last week's stream, and Bam, I really appreciate that, brother. I'm glad you always enjoy these streams. I just love the idea of chilling out and, and chatting to you all. 35 years, okay, fair enough. Um, Kim's Workshop, what's your opinion about the HB35 Plus? Now, I had and gave away an HB35, and that actually went to my buddy Pete, who's in New Zealand. And I absolutely adored that guitar, and it was great to go over and visit it and play it again. So if the HB35 Plus is their extra special HB35, then I'm absolutely certain it will be a beautiful guitar to play. I've got nothing but good things to say about Harley Benton in general. Uh, they get their QC right pretty much most of the time, and when they don't, they are usually quite good at sorting out any issues. I know full well that there will be people out there, and this is kind of a disclaimer, uh, that will have had difficulties or problems because I don't know of any guitar company who hasn't had problems at some stage or another. Even the mighty PRS, I'm sure, have had their issues. But I'm very, very impressed with Harley Benton. I'm very impressed with Glary as well, actually, the customer service and their attention to, to getting things right. They really look for my feedback on how they can improve their guitars, which I think is a great thing, you know. Uh, I like not to step on toes. Sometimes it happens with so many great channels in this community. We're lucky, aren't we? We are in a golden age. We're all connected on the internet. And, um, and we, yeah. About 82 on TAC, says Hadley, Hadley Scott McIntyre. Wow, 82 years old. Could well be, yeah. Uh, yes, make them later at night so I can join in the morning. Thank you. Uh, this is this is pretty uh, pretty late at night for me, Pete, at, at my age, um, forty eight now, um, and <laughs> yeah, feeling it. So coming up for probably coming up for ten o'clock, I'd have thought. Now, yeah, nine minutes, and we'd have done an hour. Really glad you're enjoying it, though, guys. Yeah. I was thinking you might have to change your channel name considering China built quality is getting better. There's nothing wrong with staying skeptical even when quality is getting better. All companies still need to be kept on their metal, don't they? So, yeah, um, I think that's a. I, we also had a vote on that about this time last year. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, love the channel. What do you think of the V100, the vintage against the Epiphone? Now, do you know, I really wish that I had done the V100. It's gone back now to JHS. I'm sure I can get it again. Uh, probably one that's not relicked actually, um, but I think that it's it's very comparable. I think the Epiphone would, would take it. Michael Trembley says, will you demo Harley Benton valve amps? Yes, I certainly will, definitely. Um, you have an HB ST20 shot on eBay, which is rather great, only the pickup sounded pretty rubbish. Yeah, I think that perhaps sometimes one of the things that you, you do need to replace um, are pickups. They can be the weak point of a guitar. Do I keep all the Chinese guitars? All the Chinese ones, yes. The ones I've bought, I, I tend to keep them. The ones I've reviewed in the last 18 months, two years, only the Glary ones, and that's because they are so sh cheap that they are more expensive to ship back than the value of the guitar. That's crazy, absolutely crazy in my mind. But I may well do a few Glary giveaways. I'm not giving away that strat because I can't put it down. Uh, but no, I don't keep any review guitars or get paid for the reviews because I want to keep myself absolutely on the undisputable side of, of the honesty line. So no, I, I don't do that. So uh, it's so old, it has the copyright headstock. Oh, right, okay. I think you might be talking about a few comments way, way, way up. Um, Mike, are you going to get an LT guitar? As soon as ever I can afford one. Absolutely. His guitars, Lewis is an absolutely incredible builder and the guitars he's let me demo for him are exquisite and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And yes, I, I would love to have bought that purple telly. You know what I'm like with purple tellies. Um, I think several of us have you beat on the age issue. Well, that's that's not a bad thing. Do you know, when people say to me, are you, uh, are you worried about getting older? I say no, because it really does beat the alternative. So I'm quite happy to carry on getting older. All the time I've got my, my faculties about me and I can walk and talk and do videos and stuff like this, then yep, I'm, I'm more than happy to get old, getting these distinguished grey bits. Phil Mosley has the V100 PBB with P90s, lovely. Um, I agree regarding the relative age at Brad Miller. Okay, great stream CGS, thank you Jensen. That's really kind of you, really enjoyed my streams, bless you. I don't do very many, but I'm, I'm thinking about doing more because they're really quite enjoyable. I love this interaction. I know it's a bit, um, a little bit lazy just sitting here on the sofa reading your comments and responding, but it's really nice to be able to, to interact in real time. I think that's one of the things I like most about this. So yeah, let's hopefully get a few more done. Uh, what do we got? Yes, the HB ST20 with the headstock. That's very similar to the one from a California company. It is indeed, yes. Um, and in fact, there was a greeny blue one that was at Gitcon, that was very, very close to one I played at TGU, the real one. And I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, Keith Richard said, it, no one wants to get old, but nobody wants to die. There you go, exactly, as I said, beats the alternative. Uh, Mike MCE says, the knowledge that channels like yours, CGS brings is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Well, thank you, my friend. I, I do the very best I can. I don't know um, everything about everything. I know a little bit about a lot of things. And if I can share it and I can help people, or even if it's just a forum and a jumping off point for people to be in touch with each other, then that's a great thing as far as I'm concerned. Love doing this. Uh, it's not getting old, it's getting up in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> I know that feeling. I know that feeling too well. Um, yeah, bad back, aches in places you didn't know that you had places before. Yeah, definitely. Ben says, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. Bless you, Ben. Love you to subscribe if you haven't already. It's really nice to see so many of you here. I have no idea how many are watching. I guess probably a lot less now that I've rambled on for nearly an hour, but at least we've seen the unboxing 
of, of the Dano that I'm going to do a review on for you really shortly, or a demo at least, and hopefully you've enjoyed that. Um, Kim says, I get a lot of previews on my channel, Harley Benton guitars and other stuff. Wow, cool. Check that out. That's brilliant. Nice one. What will happen to the price of guitars after Brexit? That's a really good point. Oh, 68 watching. That's lovely. Great, great stuff. Um, <laughs> Quentin says, I enjoy being old and yelling at the kids, get off my lawn. So, yeah, the Brexit thing. Um, I think that it's a storm in a teacup. I really do. I know that the... I think if you've watched the Guitar Max video, you'll know I've been reading a book called Factfulness, and it covers the fact that the news outlets all love a little bit of controversy. They don't really like reporting good news because it doesn't sell. Bad news and sensationalism sells. And I think we've been, we've been really, really pushed with this over Brexit. I think it's... It's a difficult thing for us in the UK because it's been so divisive in terms of the vote for and against was 58-42, uh, which is it's as close as a tie really in any electoral turnout where it's 70% turnout um, happens. And that means that there's almost half the country that, that are really upset about it and I think a lot more than that now. Uh, I think that we will maintain a very good relationship with our European cousins. At least I really strongly hope we do. Uh, not just from a trade perspective, but from the perspective that joining and being part of a wider community, a little bit like this guitar community, and a, a wider um, collaborative environment like the EU was, is a good thing um, and I think it's a shame that we're leaving it but I know and understand why those that voted to leave voted to leave but do I think it's going to affect guitar prices I think very little because I've bought a Framus from Germany or Framus I'm pretty sure it's Framus um, but there are not that many major manufacturers in either the UK or in, in Europe. Most of the manufacturing seems to be the States and the Far East. So, uh, in fact, if anything, I think it might well be that, that we enhance our trade relations. Uh, certainly there's big talk of it with the US already, that our um, Foreign Secretary, Dominic Raab, went over to visit recently and our good American friends seem to be very very willing to do a lot of trade deals with us so I don't think we're going to see the price of American guitars skyrocket. I also know for a fact that we won't see prices from China skyrocket because they're they're really struggling with with uh, sanctions being levied on them and I think that places like um, Actually, that's really good. I, I will read your comment in a moment, Mike, because I totally agree. In fact, I'll read it now. Embrace diversity, not division. That's totally, totally right. Uh, the biggest problem we've had, and I think that's pretty much Phil Mosley's point, is that, um, yeah, exactly. It's not about not being friends. It's just, it's all about the politics. But the problem is we've got, um, we've had a ring over here with our politics to take a democratic vote in a democracy, in a de democratic country. So, um, but I don't think it's going to affect the price of guitars, not at all. Uh, I think I'd be very surprised if it has as big an effect as a lot of people think it will. BV Ninja says you can always come to Switzerland. Love Switzerland, been skiing quite a few times, flown into Geneva numerous times, adore Lake Geneva, really, really good. Uh, Chris. Um, says, what's your day job? Well, Chris, in March, the end of March, I gave up my day job of 21 years. And now I've gone as a consultant. I do a lot of training work and I do a lot of uh, consulting work. And um, things are building up quite quickly with the consultancy I'm running. I also, uh, I'm in, heavily involved 
in theatre production, sound and lighting, and in directing and um, performance, uh, live theatre performance. So there's there's a lot of stuff that I do. I've got many, many irons in many fires. So, yeah. Um, when are you going to do a sound test video on the new guitar? I have said, oh, Cads, how you in? How you doing, brother? Really good to see you. Um, I will be doing a fretted Friday with the Dano either this Friday or possibly next Friday. I can't remember. I don't think I've actually got any videos in the pipeline. I was about three weeks ahead. I had a week's holiday that got covered and then I had a week's work last week. And yeah, I, I, I think it may well be this Friday. And I think we're due to have a top five in five on Tuesday. Fingers crossed I'll get that done and the Dano review done or demo done tomorrow so that there'll be the videos for this week. Um, super fan, awesome, happy time pedal show. Good morning from Australia. Good morning, my friend. I hope it's a beautiful, bright day over there for you. I'm sure it is in Australia, even though it's winter. Uh, Brexit Central said I was in a band called The Dark Web. We were always on tour. I love it. Um, Michael Trembley says the competition in the guitar market is getting a little too much for high prices. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. I think that, um, that we're, I keep saying it, we're living in a golden age of, um, of guitars at the moment. I think we've got incredible value uh, and so much choice. It, that's what's pushing companies like Gibson and, and causing them problems. Uh, you know, Fender's very good at hitting every single price point. And that's why I was saying I feel that Gibson needs to start doing, try to hit every single price point so that they've got something uh, to compete in every, in every market. Otherwise, they're very quickly going to sink, which is a shame. I dodged the day job question smoothly. Did I, Dan? Well, I've got nothing to hide. I, I, I run a theatre company. I run a theatre school. I do some safety consulting. I do some environmental consulting. And I'm a fully qualified trainer. So anything that I uh, can learn myself, I'm also qualified to train others in. So that's what I do as my consulting. I also have a lot of sound and lighting equipment that I hire out um, and I, yeah I, I'm doing a lot of a lot of different things at the moment I'm building up some more video work as well which I'm loving doing and I decided that at 55 which is still seven years away I was going to uh, give up the day job the full-time day job to do exactly what I'm doing now and I'm very glad that I did it um, seven years earlier because I'm very much happier. I've got an awful lot more time to, to do the various projects that I'm interested in and it means that my day and my weeks are incredibly varied. Last week I was teaching a summer school uh, with a number of youngsters and we wrote a brand new show, musical production, in a week and presented it on Friday evening. Oh, am I back? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can still hear you, Pete says. Brilliant, and I'm back now. Brilliant. Okay. Um, one thing you've taught us is that it's not the guitar, but the guitarist that makes the difference. 
You're absolutely right, Billabong O'Neill. Um, it is the guitarist, and uh, um, if anybody can demonstrate that, it's me. <laughs> because no matter what price guitar I demo, they always sound the same, don't they? Um, that's down, more down to my poor playing. No, I'm, I'm only joking. Uh, you're absolutely right, though. It is about, it's all in the fingers, it's all in the player. Uh, and just to go back on that question about the uh, PRS. I think that the the Harley Bentons are absolutely incredible value, absolutely brilliant. Um, yep, yeah, good audio's back and good. Um, yeah, I think I set the buffer size at four and a half thousand this time, whereas last stream I set it at two and a half thousand, and the picture looked juddery, and this doesn't look quite so juddery. But perhaps my, my internet out here in the studio can't cope with it through the laptop. Because actually, the laptop's Windows 10, and it takes all of these brilliant uh, DVI camera inputs uh, or uh, HDMI camera inputs from the G GH5. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can, uh, we can just bear with it for another five or minutes or so. So... Um, yeah, I think that the they're they're very comparable. Certainly, the the Harley Benton is is pretty close to the SE, but the SE definitely is a better built guitar. Uh, the finishing in China is great, but it's the setup and the woods and the grain and the even the veneer on the SE is just a, a hair a hair better. So. Guitar may inspire you to play, then the guitar is important, absolutely. Yeah, and you're right, uh, Cads, Chris Buck can make any guitar sound amazing, he really can. I saw him play that 1962 Fender while we were over at TGU, and it was a joy, absolute joy. Yet, yeah, now, Santana was the reason for the SE range coming out, Michael. In fact, because he wanted his signature guitar to be affordable. And so we can thank him for getting Paul to go over to the Far East and, and, and start building in Korea when he did. It was all to make sure that PRS could release the Santana at an affordable price. So bless him for that. Uh, Cads loves his Harley Benton. Oopsie, only, ma only 60 made. Oh, right. Restored my faith in Toman after that one very bad experience I had. Yeah, I remember us talking about that um, and uh, I found them to be really good, hand on heart. I found them to be really, really, um, really responsive and to sort out any problems for people. Uh, just bought a Solar, should try one, they're amazing. Wow, cool. And Phil Mosley says, uh, when they're comfy. Oh, he was talking to Hugh, sorry. Still raining, cat not moved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the cat won't move in the rain. Shouldn't be out in the rain. So, I think we ought to uh, we ought to wrap it up before the the sound goes bad again on us. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me and and watching these live streams and seeing me unbox. I don't do very many live streams. And I've done two in two weeks now, two Sundays in a row. I could turn this into a habit if it's popular. Um, it's not really been my thing because actually people um, don't seem to, it doesn't seem to get the follow on views. So, um, but as long as you're enjoying it, I certainly have had a great time. So <laughs> really, really good and lovely to have this Dan Electro DC59X 12 string and uh, I will be doing you a nice demo of it very very soon and perhaps as soon as Friday Thank you all so much. I'm seeing the beautiful, lovely comments down there and it's heartwarming and it's lovely to see you all. Really, really love hanging out with you guys. 
really, really love the fact that the channel is still growing, even after six years of me rattling on about and whinging about Chinese guitars and whinging about the fake trade. You've put up with that, but hopefully you've got an awful lot more positive stuff out of it as well. And I will, because you're all saying the lovely, lovely things here. I'll do more live streams. In fact, why don't we make an appointment for next Sunday to unbox the acoustic, which I think you're really going to like as well. So, yep, I'm going to give you the end screen now, and um, I'll try and sort out the buffer size for the next time. How about that? Let's see what we can do. And I'll also try not to delete this live stream accidentally when I'm testing the next one. So to everybody that's hung out, to all the guys that were here earlier that might watch the rest of it later, and to all of you who've stayed from start to finish, an extra special thank you. Uh, go and enjoy the rest of your Sunday, wherever you are. Have a really, really good week. And until I see you again, as always, my friends, you take really good care.